Hi, welcome to this introduction video on patent searching. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you a basic search strategy to help you find patents in your area of interest. So there are two databases you should be especially aware of, and those would be USPTO, which is the official US government site for their patents and trademarks department, and Google Patents, which is Google's product for finding patents. Both have their pros and cons. USPTO has a classification system that's better for browsing and also lets you be more comprehensive in finding all the patents related to your specific subject. Google Patents has a much more user-friendly interface, and the images are also in PDF, so you don't have to install any additional plugins or software. And also links to the original source back over at USPTO. I find the best way to go about it is to actually use them together. They actually complement each other pretty well. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you a basic approach that requires a little bit of going back and forth between the two sources, so hopefully it won't be too confusing. The idea is that we're going to use Google Patents first to find a patent that's relevant to our interests. Then we're going to take that classification number that's listed there, we're going to take it back to the USPTO site and use their classification system to find more patents related to the subject. So let's start with an example. First, we'll go into Google Patents, and the URL is just google.com forward slash patents. You'll see in the search box that it now says search patents. In this example, we're interested in searching for patents on pacemakers. So we'll just type that into the search box here. And here are the results. Under search tools, it lets you limit or sort the results in a number of ways. So let's say we only want the US patent offices, we want patents that have been issued, meaning they've already passed an application process. And if we wanted, we could also sort it by the newest patents, or also the oldest if uh, you want to get more of a historical perspective. Here's the list of results with the limits applied now. This one looks to be fairly relevant to what we want, so let's take a look at it. Clicking here will take you to the patent, and the first thing you'll notice in this box here uh, it has the basic general information like the publication number, which is kind of its unique identifier, um, the dates of publication and when it was first filed, the inventors, assignees, and sometimes they'll also include links to the original entry over at uh, USPTO as well. The abstract is a brief summary of the invention. Then you have images and figures below which you can enlarge by clicking on it. The description provides some background or context for the invention, uh, what it's for, how it's used, some of its patent history. The claims section goes over specifics of the invention, details on how it's constructed, and so on. Below you'll also find explanations of the images and figures we've just looked at before. And further down, uh, the detailed description elaborates on the claims, how the invention functions, how it's constructed, its really all the technical information that you would need. This section called Patent Citations show you what other patents have been uh, used here as references. And it also provides you links to those pages if you're interested in learning more. Legal events show you the legal history of the patent, its assignment, whether the fees have been paid, if it's been expired, uh, general changes in information, etc. Patents can also include another section called Reference By, which is a lot like the Patent Citation section, but instead lists all the other patents that have referenced this particular patent in their own works. So if you're looking for other similar patents, a good strategy would be to look at the references provided in those sections and follow them to their patent pages to learn more about them. So back to the classification number here. Uh, it can be really helpful. It's a system that categorizes all the different possible invention types. So for example, regardless of whether it's called scissors or clippers, they'll all be classified under one section because they're essentially the same thing. For this one, it's located under two places, class 607, subclass 2, and class 607, subclass 9. And we'll see in a minute what that means. You can actually click on this link and it'll take you right over to the section in USPTO. But I'll also show you how to get there manually since the link might not always be available. To do that, type in USPTO.gov into the address bar. And under Patents, click Patent Classification. Click Browse USPC Class Numbers and Titles. 
Now we get the full list of class numbers, which correspond to a specific subject area. If you remember, the class number for our specific pacemaker invention was 607 subclass 2 and subclass 9. So let's scroll down to 607. And here you can see the title of class 607 is Surgery, Light Thermal, and Electrical Application, which makes sense for a pacemaker. This is the list of all the subclasses under the main class 607. And there's typically a little description up here. This list is actually structured as a hierarchy. Uh, you could think of it as an outline, for example. The two dots mean it's indented under the entry with one dot, and if there's three dots, that means it's indented under the one with two dots, and so on. So the two class numbers for that patent we found in Google were 607 subclass 2 and 607 subclass 9. Let's take a look at subclass 2 first. If you click on the number, it'll give you a description for the specific subclass to see if it matches what you're looking for. This one is for subclass 2. You can scroll down a bit to read the description for subclass 9. Or another way would have been to click back and then click on the number 9. This description for subclass 9 actually seems more in line with what we're looking for in terms of pacemakers. So let's go back and to view the individual patents listed under subclass 9, you can just click the red P icon right next to it. And this stands for issued patents. The blue A is for patent applications. And there you go. The number up here tells you how many total results are in this collection. You can take a look at any of the patents by clicking on the title. As I've mentioned earlier, if you want to view any of the images, you must have special plugins installed. One way to bypass this would be to simply go back, copy the US patent number, return to Google Patents, and search for it there. And now you can view them easily. So again, just to summarize, the strategy here is to first search in Google Patents to find a relevant patent, use the classification number to find it over at USPTO's site using their classification scheme, and then you'll have a list of all the patents in that subject area. If you want to view the patents easier, copy the specific patent number and look it up again in Google Patents. I hope that helps, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact the NJIT library for further information.